Welcome back to Crash Test Hockey, where I talk all things NHL. If you happen to be new to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Now, the Arizona Coyotes make a trade with the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Yotes get left winger Nick Ritchie, who signed through next season as well, and a conditional draft pick, which will be either a uh, third rounder in 2023 or a second round selection in 2025. The Toronto Maple Leafs get right-handed shot defenseman Ilya Lubushkin, who will be a UFA at the end of this season, as well as Ryan Dezingle, um, who plays all forward positions and who also will be a UFA. Now, I think part of the reason why those draft picks were a little high, for some people anyways, um, is that Richie's base salary is $1.7 million this season, but it's $3.3 million next season. He was one of four players the Leafs rolled the dice on and acquired in the offseason, along with Kashe, Bunting, and Kampf, who all turned out really well. And ironically, Richie was making the most money out of all of them and had plenty of opportunity on the top line with Matthews, uh, in the top six, in the top nine, and the fourth line. And no dice, really. He was sent down to the AHL eventually to help clear a little bit of cap space, where in two games with the Marlies, uh, he had a goal and was a minus one. However, in 33 games with the Leafs, um, he had two goals, nine points, minus six. The Coyotes are getting uh, a big guy who can crash the net, uh, be a little nasty, lay on, lay on some hits. Be a bit of a pest. He's six foot two, 230 pounds. He's a left shot, 26 years old. And don't forget, uh, in the 2020-21 season with Boston, he had um, 15 goals and 26 points in 56 games. He was a minus seven that year. He should at least play in their top nine. And hey, they got to get to the cap floor somehow, right? Like almost their entire team will be UFAs next season. They need somebody to play. Now for Toronto, starting with Ryan Zingle. They get a depth player here, really. He does play center and both wings. I'm not sure he cracks the lineup, especially in the playoffs, uh, but we should see him pop in and out between now and the postseason. He makes 1.1 million against the cap right now. Uh, he's six foot, 190 pounds from Illinois in the US. He's 29 years old and will have a birthday in early March. He's a left shot, by the way. Now, in 26 games with the Coyotes this season, um, he's got four goals, seven points, and is a minus three. He's mostly known as a defensive type of player now. However, there was one point four or five seasons ago for the Ottawa Senators where he had back-to-back 20-plus -back goal seasons. Maybe a change of scenery might reignite the offensive part of him, or maybe not, and the Leafs just get a defensive specialist. Now, before I get to Labushkin, the meat of this trade, there is a bit of a cap issue here because they're over it right now. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday, February 19th. As of Sunday, February 20th, they're going to have to make a move here to clear some space, which I will assume will be to send Timothy Lilligren, wave him down to their AHL club, the Toronto Marlies. I see this as a temporary thing until they make another trade, which might involve either one of defensemen Travis Dermott or Justin Hall. Both of these guys are signed through next season as well. Dermott makes 1.5 against the cap, Hall 2 million. I would think they'd rather keep Dermott because in case a defenseman goes on the left or right, down the injury that is, he can fill in. And Hall makes more cap space that they probably want to clear up for next season as well or even to make a bigger trade before the trade deadline. There's also a possibility Dezingo could be waived, and worst case scenario, he gets picked up, and they just clear some cap space. Now, Ilya Labushkin has been playing with Jacob Chikrin for most of the season. He plays or averages just over 18 minutes a night. He can also play the penalty kill. He doesn't really have any offense to offer, but he's really good in his own zone. He's got a bit of nasty to him as well. He can clear the front of the net. And if he's paired with a guy who can move the puck, like Rasmus Sandin, then that's a match made in heaven. In 46 games this season, he's got 9 assists, 9 points, and is a minus 6. Minus 6 for the Coyotes, 
Ain't too bad. He spent his entire career in the NHL with Arizona since 2018-19. He's 6'2", 201 pounds from Russia. He's 27 years old. Now, do we think Kyle Dubas is done making trades? I don't think so. Personally, I think they needed another defenseman to play with Jake Muzzin on the right side. There is also speculation that they could use another top six forward because last season in the playoffs, Marner and Matthews got snake bitten, didn't put up much points. It was all Nylander and Kerfoot, really. Tavares, of course, got injured early early in that series against the Canadians. But what are the chances of Marner and Matthews getting snake bitten again? Not too high, I don't think. And if they were gonna go after another top six forward, there's a chance they might even have to move more money, like Alexander Kerfoot out the door. And he's been good for them in the playoffs. He plays wing, he plays center. Let me know what you think of this trade down in the comment section below. I think I'm gonna give this a B for Dubas. I'll rate it about a seven and a half, whatever, at a 10. I think they win this one over the Coyotes. But let's hear what you have to say down below. That's it, that's all. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, which will alert you when my next video comes out. And hey, in this crazy multiverse we're living in right now, remember to please be kind to each other.